Hey folks, starting the uh, tricopter build, went out to Lowe's. They didn't have um, the size of wood I needed, of course. They didn't have it. I got the frames from RC Explorer. Bought uh, one piece that was uh, a half inch uh, by two inches by two foot. So then I bought a piece of wood that was a half inch by four inches uh, that was two foot long. So I planed these all down and made them 10 millimeter square stock. I got the frame from uh, RC Explorer and that's what he used was 10 millimeter square arms. So I want to do the same thing so that it matches the frame and how the frame is drilled and such. I'm building the uh, aerobatic tri, so I cut these to 12 inches. Uh, they're actually 11 and 15 sixteenths. Why did I do that class? Well, this was a two foot board. So if I cut directly in the middle, I end up with 11 and 15 16 So that means I can use every piece of this. So I'm 15, I'm 1 16th short from being 12 inches, but I don't think that 1 16th will matter. And that gave me a whole bunch of legs. But uh, these are the tail pieces, which are inch and a half shorter because the tail blocks will go on the back. So I got six of those. And then I cut up six or seven tail blocks just so I had extra parts. And then these are little stiffening pieces that go in the middle. So all of that come out of about eight dollars worth of wood. We're going to use this carbon fiber tube to, for the tail shaft. This is a four millimeter carbon fiber tube. I'm going to go in about an inch and a half inside there. And then I'm going to come out about an inch and a half plus enough for a wheel collar plus enough for a little spacing. So and it, you know that'll so probably end up making it about three and a quarter. I'm drilling the first holes into the front arms and um, David uh, on his RC Explorer site said to uh, drill these holes in at 25 millimeters. So for all of us that live in the USA that love fractions that's 63 64. So we'll drill these holes into the front arms and we'll start putting the frame together. This is a tail piece. I drilled a hole in there. It's a little bit off center, but I don't have my drill press out here, so I try to do as best as I can on this one. I may put the others on a drill press, but yeah, it's off a little. But anyway, I made it a little bigger, so the hole is a little bit larger than my carbon fiber rod, and I did that on purpose. One, I thought I'd probably drill that off center a little. So what I'll do is when I put this in here and I glue it, there'll be excess epoxy going everywhere out of there and I'll center that up perfectly in there and then let that set up so it'll still be you know it'll be great because I'm offset just the opposite direction so that should be perfect and I'm going to rough this up so you're going to take some sandpaper rough that up a little so that'll go up in there we're going to glue that in place and then the tailpiece will be ready to have the block drilled and mounted so here's the frame. I got uh, ended up using uh, 440 bolts. I tend to have all standard stuff in my box. So 440 three quarter inches long. This is going to work pretty good. Uh, so I've got all my uh, sticks cut. Uh, of course, I got the tail piece with the carbon fiber rod in there, and then also got this uh, block that goes on to make my tail block just slides right on there, and then I'll put a wheel collar on there. So anyway, we're fixing to button up the frame and tighten up everything, and we'll go from here. Just got the frame all screwed together. I still don't have my wheel collar on. Did a little paint job, um, black and yellow. I don't know, just kind of going for a bumblebee. I was going to strap the tail, but that's too much work. Maybe later. Anyway, black and yellow for now. Finished product. I went out and flew it. Um, I didn't video that one, but I'm going to go out up and start over. I ended up taking, I had a 450 uh, landing gear, actually from my Blade 450X that I bought extra. Uh, decided to put that on the bottom. I made the little wooden plate out of two 1 16 piece of plywood. I didn't have a 1 8, so I took two, glued them together, put them on. So it's just like uh, RC Explorer's video. Again, this is RC Explorer's uh, main frame I purchased from him. And then uh, the booms, I painted the yellow in the front, the black in the back. I put a uh, nice neon green in the front and a black in the back. Probably maybe get some orange ones to go in the back. I think uh, some orange blades. Next time I place I order, I may get some orange blades just so I can see this blade 
a little better. I mean, I can see it, so I mean, that's what counts. Um, I did a little bit different on the tail. I seen um, the video on YouTube that I mentioned earlier, uh, and it's in the link at the bottom from the guy that I seen build one of these, and it looked like fun, and he inspired me to build my own. So anyway, I cut my booms shorter, I told you earlier. Uh, so th these are about like what he cuts his at. And what I decided to do different is I am a helicopter guy. So I took uh, some ball links off old Rect 450 I had that was sitting around, took that off, put that on there. This linkage is actually the linkage from the swash plate, uh, or not from the swash plate, from the um, fly bar to the uh, head so this was a short link I was able to screw it out and get the right link again I used a carbon fiber rod uh, with a uh, wheel collar to match and that moves super smooth I sanded all that down where it works wonderfully I'm using the EXI 213F digital servo on there it's a little 9 gram servo seems to be working okay of course I've only got one flat on it uh, but it's doing pretty good I've adjusted uh, the gains on these uh, a little bit to try to get a little bit better flight. I'm still playing with those gains a little more and you'll see in the video uh, that it's a rocking a little and I'll adjust on that too. So I'm using a 2200 milliamp uh, battery. This is actually the battery that came with my 450 Blade X that I got on there right now. But I also like uh, the blue lipos. Of course this one's got a uh, piece of uh, velcro on both sides because I fly these in two or three different airplanes so I got a little bit different setup for some of them and also use these in a six cell pack so I actually velcro them together to make a six cell pack for another application so these are the 2200s these are 30 C's these are blue lipos I really like these I've never had any problem other than this one the other day I was messing with this tricopter and uh, didn't really pull that hard but that broke off so that could have been wonderfully uh, fire, flame, smoke, but it just broke off, come loose, made a pop. That was it. So now I've got this battery that has a problem. So either fix it or toss it or whatever. But uh, I do like the blue lipos. Um, they're pretty good batteries, especially for the price. Um, the turn again, the Nanotex. I like them better. The Nanotex I actually like better, but I don't have any Nanotex this small. Most of my Nanotex are big for my helicopters. Um, it flies pretty good. Uh, it's, uh, I don't think this board seems to stabilize as well as the one with the LCD, but I bought this one because it was so cheap. It was only $13 or $14 for this. This is the Hobby King 3.0 board. It's uh, you know a lot cheaper than the other one, but I think I would, you know, next time I place an order, I'll probably get a couple of those LCD boards and, and put those. In. For one, it's a little bit easier to program on the fly. Now, I am an IT person, so this was relatively easy to hook this to my laptop and uh, be able to get uh, that programmed pretty quickly so it wasn't that big a deal. So anyway, let's go out and fly it and we'll see how it goes. <laughs> 